It's not about building this thing to be remembered. It's about living your life and enjoying it while you still have it. This is something that my friend Ben Jordan said a couple weeks ago while we were doing a Q&A session at Perfect Circuit out in California, and I think that this is a really important idea that we need to talk about. I get a lot of comments and messages about this similar sort of existential dread when it comes to making stuff. And I guess with my own ulterior motives here of trying to, I don't know, put a spotlight or at least open a platform for discussion about the darker aspects of the mental health stuff surrounding artistry and creativity, it's something that's really worth exploring because I think we all have to face this ugly question now and again of what's the point? And funny enough, about 20 days ago, someone posted something on Reddit that I think sums this up better than I ever could. Releasing music feels so pointless. I love making music and I have some finished tracks, but when it came time to release stuff, I felt an overwhelming sense of sorrow. It's literally like a drop in an ocean, and it isn't even a good drop. I might just make it just for the process and send it to my family and friends or even listen to it myself and pat me on the back, but I would love to share my art with the world. Today's video and this project were made possible thanks to my friends at UVI. UVI are makers of some of my favorite sound libraries for composing and making music, some really wild creative effects plugins, and one of my favorite software instruments ever. If you want to check them out for yourself or get everything that they have to offer through their Sonic Pass service, you can find more information with the link down in the description. A huge thank you to my friends at UVI, as well as some additional support from the fine people at PolyEnd for giving me a place to stay. Without them, none of this would have been possible. So if you enjoyed this video and this project, check them out. And if you already have their stuff, maybe send them a little tweet with a heart emoji and say, thanks for helping Mustache Man. And then a uh, I don't know, a gif of Shrek or something. Howdy doody, buckaroonies. It's uh, been a while since I've been on camera, so forgive me if I'm a little bit rusty here. I've spent the last couple weeks traveling a little over 5,000 miles with my friend Ben Jordan for this sort of ridiculous idea. I've spent the last couple weeks traveling across the country and back, filming this huge project, editing it all down, creating all this music, and turning this idea into a reality. And after pouring my heart and soul into this, I'm now left wondering, what do I do? Because it's not something that's going to get a ton of views. It's not something that's going to make me much, if any, money. And most people probably don't even care about the fact that it exists in the first place. Because releasing original music on YouTube is a death sentence in the algorithm, especially for this channel. And it's not without good reason. The majority of the people that watch this channel just don't care about my original music. And that's okay. A lot of you aren't here for that. And the majority, I would probably guess, don't even care about its existence. So what am I to do? Now this, granted, is a very specific situation, but I'm sure that you can at least empathize with the idea here that we've all faced at some point. I've made this thing, and now no one's gonna care about it. So what's the fucking point? A lot of us start out making music as a hobby. That hobby develops into a passion, and eventually that passion becomes this addiction. There's another track to be made, a new album to create, a collaboration that you want to connect on, and then the cycle inevitably repeats. As creators, we're perpetually stuck in this blessing and curse of chasing this ideal form that can only be realized, or at least so we convince ourselves, through our next idea. But along the way, we often get sold into this idea that the pursuit also has to tangibly return something. We want to make music our careers, and not just any music, but our own original music. And that means we're now in it for the plays, and the attention, and ultimately, the money. That means now, next time you release something, that relationship between your work and your audience takes on a completely different dynamic that can never be undone. Now, it's all about making your work known, and that comes down to one thing. 
the impact. But I think a lot of us, and maybe through no fault of our own, end up developing this wrong sense of what the impact truly is. Because we keep grinding away at this fever dream of ours of turning music into a reality, we build this deeply unrealistic expectation of both ourselves and our work, and we end up expecting, if not outright anticipating, an outcome rather than being open to the outcome. As artists at heart, we all know that making music isn't about reaching some arbitrary level of success. It's ultimately about expressing ourselves and our experiences in a way that's unique to us. It's about tapping into that creative spark that drives us and, in turn, sharing it with others. Whether your music reaches millions of people or maybe just a handful, the impact it has on our own lives is what truly matters. As long as you keep creating and experimenting and pushing yourself to grow as an artist, you continue to find that fundamental joy and purpose within your work. If you feel like you're being held back by this fear of rejection or a lack of success or recognition or whatever you want to call it, Here's a little bit of perspective to bounce around the old meat noodle. Everybody dies, and <laughs> the thing with that is it's estimated it only takes really a couple of generations for you to be forgotten entirely. That includes all of your work, all of your achievements, all of your aspirations and dreams, and everything about you that made you, you. Mortality really sucks. And the hard thing to accept with that is that everything is eventually destined to become a memory, and memories too are eventually doomed to be forgotten one last time. While I do believe somewhere deep down in the fiber of my being that art and creation are important to the human condition and existence and all that, I think it's also important to remember that this isn't why we do these things. It's not that we're doing them for success and renown and whatever. We're doing these things because we have to do them. And it's about living your life and doing the things that make you happy. And that's, I think, the ultimate reason that we have to maintain. The true impact of our art realistically probably won't come in the form of world-renowned fame, but Rather, it might come in the form of a small, die-hard fan base, or some kid in the middle of nowhere in Iowa who finds the inspiration to pick up an instrument through our work during a tough time in their life. That album you're unsure of might be the one that provides inspiration to a listener who really needed it. Or perhaps best of all, the act of creating music brings you joy and purpose, regardless of the outcome. To borrow a lesson from Stoicism, I think it really is about being an amateur. By letting go of the fear of rejection or a lack of recognition, you can cultivate what is ultimately a more sustainable and fulfilling creative practice that in turn enables you to create fearlessly and share fearlessly. It's not about the result, it's about the act of doing the work. I'm sure we'd all love to sit here blowing smoke up each other's and say, we're just in this for the vibes, man, but that's not the truth. And that leaves us with the uncomfortable elephant left to address in the room. What do we do about releasing our work when it fails to find an audience or connect at all? It's natural to seek validation for our creative work, but with the incredible oversaturation of music and the playlist-dominated industry coercing a more playlist-friendly approach to music, it's becoming more challenging to find that validation. The ugly truth is that not everyone will appreciate your work, or even want what you're offering. While validation, in a way, can be a driving force for the existence of our art, it's not the only reason that we create it. We make music to share our stories and emotions and perspectives with others. We want our work to have an impact and resonate with listeners. 
Now, while you could certainly find validation by way of vanity metrics by creating super streaming playlist friendly music to be played on a shitty Bluetooth speaker in another room while someone tries to make a homemade cat food recipe they found on TikTok that afternoon, is that truly why you're in this? While you probably shouldn't be making music solely for the purpose of getting heard or getting famous, it's also not realistic to say that the only reason we make music is always purely for ourselves. We don't make art to not be looked at. We don't make music to not be heard. We don't write or speak to not communicate and be understood. And we don't make YouTube videos to not be watched. Of course, we all make tracks for fun, and I think it always starts with that pure intention of making music that we enjoy listening to ourselves. But when it comes time to get down to business, we select the tracks that we purposefully want to get out there and share with people. We make music to have this impact, whatever that may be. While we need feedback and that validation to improve our craft, we shouldn't let the need for validation consume us or become the sole driving purpose. Our motivation should be to make art that speaks to us and in turn share it with the world, not to feed our egos or gain attention. As artists, we have this unique superpower to create something that deeply resonates with people, making them feel seen and understood. The connection between artist and audience is extraordinarily unique, and it's not always easy to navigate. As an artist, you have this unique and unrivaled ability to create something that someone didn't know they needed until they had it. It's up to you to set that bar and define your own output. It's important to remember that the impact you have on just one person's life is more significant than any level of success or notoriety. That one person telling their story about how your work changed their life is worth more than anything that other forms of success could bring, whether it's now, five years from now, or long after you're gone. Whatever that impact is and whenever it happens, it may not be something you're even around to witness. So you just have to ask yourself that one question. Is that still an impact worth making? So don't be afraid to take risks and push yourself creatively by committing solely to creating what you feel like you need to create. Eventually, that audience will come, and eventually, it'll all be forgotten anyways, so there's no point in hiding behind a fear of not being recognized. So I guess maybe that kind of leaves us back where we started then. What's the f point? I did this project because I wanted to, it seemed like it might be kind of crazy and weird, and it was a good opportunity to push myself and challenge myself as a creator and as an artist and go through this big, impossible, ridiculous thing that no reasonable person would probably do for the sake of making something that I felt had meaning and significance that might connect with other people. It's, I guess, ultimately a good reminder that art isn't really about the money or the success or anything like that. It's about an opportunity to express myself in a way that I, I just don't know how to do otherwise. And it gave me that outlet that if I don't take, I just feel like I'm going to explode. That, at the end of the day, I think is what keeps me going with this stuff. And I got to go on this crazy, interesting adventure with one of my best friends and do something ridiculous and hang out and make music. And that's pretty cool. And I don't know, who knows? Maybe this is one of those things that takes off and people really, really enjoy it and it does blow up and connect with a whole bunch of people. But if it doesn't, I don't really care because I had a lot of fun with it. But that's me and that's not you, is it? So why should you keep going? Why should you care? Why should you finish that song? Why should you jump on that next collab? Why should you learn that instrument? Why should you release that album you've been meaning to release since your 20s. I guess it's like Ben said 2,600 miles ago and 12 days ago in our weird journey making abstract music art film projects that probably no one will see or care about. It's not about building this thing to be remembered. It's about living your life and enjoying it while you have it.